Let's talk about the new Mac Studio that Apple just released. I'm a videographer, so this video will be covering it from a video editing standpoint, as well as discussing how a video editor should spec it when they buy it. To get to the point without wasting any of your time, for almost all video editors, the base model Mac Studio would be more than enough. I would go as far to say that you don't even need to consider the M1 Ultra unless you frequently export extremely long 4K or 8K content, edit raw video, or need to be able to preview heavy effects like film grain in real time at full resolution. So how did I come to this conclusion? Well, I just bought the base model 16-inch MacBook Pro a few months ago, and it has the M1 Pro chip in it. The chip is identical in CPU performance to the M1 Max in the Mac Studio, however, the M1 Max has about 70-80% to 80 faster graphics performance. It also has double the RAM and decode and encode engines. Even though my MacBook Pro is the base model, and not even as fast as the base model Mac Studio, it does everything that I need it to at incredible speed, and to be perfectly honest, there are very few situations where I wish I had anything faster. Upgrading from 16GB of RAM to 32GB would be my one recommendation. However, it's only an issue when I try to run After Effects and Final Cut at the same time. If I just stick to one app at a time, there are zero issues. And while it would be nice to get real-time, full-resolution playback with Film Grain Active in Resolve, the reality is that I don't need real-time Film Grain while I'm editing. I'm completely happy to edit with clean footage and then just activate it before I export. Despite all of that, I'm very impressed by the new Mac Studio. And if I didn't need a portable editing machine, it's very likely that I would be selling it to buy a Mac Studio. At two grand for the base model, which is the one that I would personally buy if I was in the market, it's an incredible value. Even if you pair it with the arguably overpriced studio display, you're only paying $300 more for the package than you would with an identically specced MacBook Pro. And instead of having a 16 inch display, you'd have a 27 inch display. But if display quality isn't that important to you, then go to Costco and buy a 32 inch display for 300 bucks and you'll have an incredible editing machine for $1,000 less than the equivalent MacBook. With that setup, it'll still be $200 cheaper than what I paid for my M1 MacBook Pro and it has better performance specs. So this leads me to which computer I think is the best option for video editors. And the answer is that the base model Mac Studio is the best option for video editors unless you fall into a few specific categories. Number one, if you need to work while traveling, then obviously get a MacBook. Number two, if you don't make money from video editing, then just buy an M1 Mac Mini with 16 gigs of RAM. And number three, if you're Marquez Brownlee and you edit 8K Red Raw constantly, you should get the most expensive Mac Studio. Or just wait until the Apple Silicon Mac Pro comes out like Marquez said he's planning on doing. Apple really is changing the game for video editors and all their computers now are so good that you really can't go wrong. So buy whatever fits into your budget. My friend uses the cheapest Mac Mini you can buy and he's a professional video editor. And though it may be a bit slower at times than my MacBook, it still works great for him. So like I said, you just really can't go wrong.